Designing and selling Solar Edge PV systems just got faster and easier with the new web-based Solar Edge Designer. Drawing on the vast experience of PV professionals worldwide, we've streamlined the PV project lifecycle for a true end-to-end -end solution, guiding you through each stage of PV system design. Quickly locate your site using aerial imagery. Create realistic 3D models. Perform shading analysis to ensure optimal system design. Drag and drop solar modules on the roof according to Solar Edge's flexible design rules. The designer helps to simplify the electrical design process by recommending inverter and power optimizer models and quantities, sizing constraints, and other key design parameters. You'll even get real-time feedback, ensuring string validity. Use the Solar Edge Designer's report summary to help close the deal. Show your customer the completed PV system design for their home, including the bill of materials, estimated monthly energy production, consumption, and self-consumption. And that's not all. By exporting your 3D design directly to the monitoring platform, easily create a physical layout for smoother site installation and long-term maintenance. Save time and grow your sales by making Solar Edge Designer part of your Solar Edge project DNA. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's designer session where we will be going over the Solar Edge designer software. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so also known as level one or the beginners, uh, this session, for those of you that are even new to designer or for those of you that have used it a few times and perhaps struggle with it, as, uh, as many of you I know do, and hopefully this is actually gonna get you through each of those sessions today. So my name is Richard Fuel. I'm the UK and, uh, and Irish sales manager uh, and I'd like to also introduce you to Chris Laver today. Uh, Chris is our commercial project manager but unfortunately Chris has actually picked up a bug and he's off work today so it's going to be me the whole way today. Um, so hopefully you won't get too tired of my voice. Um, as you all know Solar Edge is the leading inverter manufacturer for PV installations in both residential and commercial projects. So to accompany our products, uh, of course, we have the Solar Edge monitoring portal, which I'm sure you're all aware of. And then obviously now with the designer software, which brings value to both you and your clients uh, for pre-installation and indeed post-installation with the monitoring software. Now there's no cost associated with the Solar Edge monitoring. Um, and I'm sure you're gonna agree with me that it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and for us to provide such a service with no cost is indeed, uh, why our products are slightly more expensive than uh, traditional systems. Um, so there's obviously no cost as well associated with these training sessions. Um, ultimately, we value your business. Uh, we want to support our installers as much as we can with training, pre-installation, and of course, after sales as well. So any products or any questions you have, you can direct them to me. Um, and you can see my email address there just on, on the screen. So just a few things to let you know. So we can't hear you and we can't see you. Um, so if you have any questions throughout the session, you have the ability to actually ask any questions, um, which only I will see. So it doesn't matter what question comes through. And then hopefully I'll be able to read out your question and then uh, give you the, uh, the, the answer for that as well. So I'm just gonna write in here just now. So this is where you can ask questions. You should all be able to hear me as well. Um, so if you can't hear me, <laughs> you, you won't be able to hear me say, please check your audio. So any questions you have, and unfortunately I've only got one screen. So when I'm actually in the presentation or in the designer software, a little pop-up does come for a question. So at each stage, I'll actually look at the, uh, at the questions on there. So, um, so that's that, okay. <laughs> So just to highlight as well, just um, just one little slide here to show that it's not just uh, myself and, and Chris that are involved here in the Solar Edge team. Um, for all of you that know, we've got Christelle and, and Nick, um, myself as well, responsible for the sales. That's with uh, installers, with consultants, with uh, distributors, end users. 
anything like that, they're coming through. Um, we then um, got Jason Kirridge, who's our technical marketing manager, who ran a fantastic uh, webinar this morning on the new energy bank. Um, we've then got Chris, as I've mentioned, Hazel and Danielle. Uh, Hazel's our marketing manager and Danielle's our office admin. And then we've then got the whole support from the UK support team with Nadav and his team, with Jürgen, Rich, Konstantinos and Martin. And we're all backed up as well by our uh, central location there. So, um, yeah, so our central location for our support team as well. OK, so just to show you that one there. So as I've mentioned, we've got a few sessions coming up in our designer training series. So today we'll be going over the basic training, how to start a project, how to create a 3D model, uh, how to select and add the PV modules to the property that you're designing, how to carry out the electrical design, and then indeed create a summary page uh, report for your project. So today's purpose is to simply go through slowly, slowly uh, with some baby steps so you can all get used to the program, um, allow you to start using the software, um, and today we're going to be designing a, a residential and a commercial system as well. So just a few things to point out. This is a live presentation. Um, I've got my power plugged into my laptop, so I shouldn't uh, have any issues with, with power. Um, and then also as well, uh, <coughs> we're working with the designer. So a few things to note with this, you've got uh, Google Chrome. That's the best browser to use designer in. Uh, if you're using Firefox or Internet Explorer, um, then what we'll find is some of the features aren't necessarily available in there. So please use Google Chrome. Um, you need to be using a mouse as well. Um, so some people ask, can you use it on a tablet? So you will be using a mouse. So uh, I, I personally have just my keypad on my laptop, um, but some people obviously have external mouses. And the whole way through the process, we're going to be using the left mouse clicker. And I'll be uh, explaining that as we go through. OK, and then finally, on there as well, I've written angles, um, and you'll understand why the angles are quite important. Um, so we'll go through those in, in the sessions, OK? <coughs> Excuse me. So over the coming weeks as well, um, we'll be showing you exactly how to use the designer uh, with the selection of different residential projects. Um, next week, we've got intermediate session where we're going to be doing about eight different uh, buildings. Um, really nice and simple, straightforward, just to show you exactly how to use it. And then the advanced and the expert as well don't be put off by the names of these um, because basically it's just the way that they're structured on the different features within designer whether it's consumption whether it's adding batteries um, whether it's a difficult roof a flat roof a ground array a carport so there's lots of different things in there okay so just to give you an understanding um, how far designer can go these are just a selection of residential properties that we're going to be doing next week so you can see there we've got dormers in there we've got um uh, um, uh, chimneys, uh, we can do obstacles and lots of different things in there as well. The designer actually allows you to, uh, for new build projects as well, if you've got a plan or a PDF um, and the, the construction hasn't actually taken place yet or the building's not shown on Google Earth, you could actually use um, a plan for that as well. Uh, so there's just some more ideas of the extent that the, <coughs> excuse me, the residential can go to. And as I've said, you can actually put a plan over the top and then build those projects as well. Commercial buildings. So with the commercial, very, very similar to the residential. We've got um, an ability in there to actually show the irradiance. So obviously the, the southerly aspects will generate more power compared to the northerly aspects. And this is a really nice guideline to give you an understanding of the, the potential energy that can be achieved from each of the roofs that are available. Um, Designer gives you the ability to actually uh, show the potential size of a PV system and the potential generation of that PV system, including the CO2 savings, um, and then obviously as well, their savings of electricity as well. So this is not exclusive to commercial, it's, it's both residential, but just to show you that you can do residential and commercial. Large commercial, we can go as big as you want to go, um, and this is a really nice example of of a nice uh, commercial property that can be built with uh, maintenance areas around the outside as well. And then finally, once we've then built the project and we've uh, put the modules on, we then come into our stringing tool as well, which is very easy to use. Uh, this can then be printed out, given to your installation team to show them exactly how to wire everything up uh, with the selected uh, power optimizers and the inverters obviously on there as well. And then finally, it then ends with a, a detailed summary report with an image of the property, the generation that can be achieved. And as I've mentioned about consumption, you can also put in the consumption of the homeowner to then show them exactly 
how much power they're going to be saving um, and how much is going to be exported and still imported from the grid. Okay, so just to finish there uh, on the slides, um, once again, there's my details there and also Chris's details. Should you have any questions or any issues or anything like that in the next couple of uh, days over the weekend when you're designing all of your, your wonderful systems, okay? <laughs> so let's begin. We'll come onto the Solar Edge website. This is our starting point straight away. Um, I do I do encourage you to give your full attention over the next uh, 50 minutes now. Um, just try try and ignore your phones and the emails coming through um, because there will be parts that are explained early on and if you miss those um, you will get stuck moving on to the next stage. So as we start on the Solar Edge website, um, as, as we start with anything this is our website over here and just to bring your attention over here to the left hand side we've got the learning center and when I click on the learning center just move that out of the way as we come on here, we've got the Edge Academy. Uh, we talk about this quite often because there's lots of training videos in there, the fundamentals. Once you've carried out the fundamentals training, um, and I encourage all of your staff to carry out the fundamentals training because it's basically the whole story of Solar Edge and, and what we are and what we can offer um, with lots of videos and things in there as well. Once this is then completed, you can then carry out the energy bank training, which was uh, carried out this morning on the webinar. Uh, and there's also the expert training in there as well. As I scroll down in here, we've also got some featured videos. So there's lots of different uh, uh, learning videos in there. And then as we come down, we've got the training events, which are listed just here. So, <coughs> excuse me. As you can see, this is where you can register for next week's the intermediate, the following weeks of the advanced, and then an expert. And then in the month of December, we're just going to be giving an update. So as it's a, a web-based program, we're actually updating the software all, all of the time. So just going to come back up to the top. We'll just come back to the main website by clicking on the logo and just here is where we're going to click to start in the designer so we click on login and then just here we come down to designer now this is the page that's going to open first of all if you've not used designer before or if you don't have a solar edge account so this is where you would type in your email address and your password that you've already created for your solar edge account this is the same email address that you're going to be using for setup. So when you're commissioning a system, it's the same email address that you'll be using if you get in touch with our support team, if you've got any cases. Um, it's the same email address for the monitoring and then obviously for the designer as well. So if you don't have an account and you're new to Solar Edge, then just here, you can click sign up here. Once you click sign up here, it then goes into the process of applying for an account, type in your name, your email address, your phone number, and all those different credentials. On the second page, it will say to you, do you want monitoring? At this stage right here, if you say yes, you have to provide a serial number of an inverter. If you say no, you then get your account. So I'd advise you if you haven't actually got an account to then just select no that you don't want monitoring and then at a later date, you can then simply just add the serial number to your system once you've actually um, had the system installed, okay? So that's for people that don't have an account. If you already have an account, and you want to add someone else to your account, I'm just gonna show you what to do rather than setting up two accounts. In the top right hand corner of designer and also the monitoring system as well, you'll see your name. If you click on your name and then come down here to user settings, it will then open up and then you can add new people to your account. So once you come into uh, user settings, um, I think a process then opens and it goes to my account. You have a bar across the top and it says users and then you can simply then add new users to your to your account okay so as you've seen the projects are now displayed on here so these are different projects that uh, people have um, been designing uh, around the world um, i can't see your projects and you can't see my projects as i'm logged in as a member of solar edge i can actually see my colleagues projects from solar edge okay so very briefly if you've not used designer before then this will just be empty and there'll be no projects in there to start a new project we simply come down here to the plus button in the bottom right hand corner. So if I move my mouse just slightly higher, we've got the opportunity of doing a residential, a commercial, and also here basic as well. Okay, just gonna click on the questions just in case, uh, yeah, everyone can hear me, you're all good. Okay, so once I come down here, if I want to just simply create a very basic design, I can come up here and click on basic. Now what this does, say for example, Mrs. Jones, 
Okay, let's just put that to a little one. And then we can type in either the postcode or a town or anything like that. And let's say, for example, I'm doing a project in Cardiff and then select Cardiff. And over here, I then choose the panel that I'm gonna be using. Now in the database, we've actually got every single panel from every different manufacturer that's ever in here, as you can see. So you can scroll down through or actually look for it. But say, for example, you're looking for, I don't know, an LG module, type in LG, there's LG Electronics. And then from LG, we've then also got every single model of panel that LG have ever made. So what's quite important is if you're actually choosing a module, rather than scrolling down, let's say, for example, we're losing, looking for a 350 watt, be, be sure to get the right 350 watt panel from LG. The reason why I say get the right one, as you can see, there's actually a few different ones on here. So here we've got an A5, an N5, and a V5. Okay, so these ones are all slightly different. If we click and select this, per, uh, this particular module, just here, we've got the view module specifications. This then gives us the ability to see from the data sheet of that particular module that you've selected the right module. As I'm sure you can agree or understand that every panel is slightly different. So each of them are gonna have a different VOC, a different ISC, VMPP, IMPP, and obviously the length and the width of the panels as well as slightly different. So just be sure that you select the right one in the first place. Okay. Once you've selected the right one, it will always then appear at the top. So once you've actually selected the right one, it's only going to be at the top. So again, make sure you get the right one because otherwise the wrong one will always be at the top. Nice and simply here, we then type in how many panels we're going to be using. So let's say we're using 12 panels. It shows us that we've got a 4.2 kilowatt system and all of this information here, you can either change or just leave it as it is because this is a basic one. We've got 12 panels, we're all facing the same way. And then up here, I then just simply click on calculate. Once we come on calculate, make sure you're on single phase or three phase, depending on the property. Click on single phase, press recalculate, and we can see here it's suggesting to use the 3.5 kilowatt inverter, the P401 optimizers, and then here we've got the one string of 12 P401 optimizers with the 3500. Okay, so this is just a very basic one just to understand which optimizer works with this panel. Now, for those of you that may uh, know SolarEdge, we've got a different variation of different optimizers that are available. So can I use a P404, for example, on this, on this uh, particular panel? If I click on the drop down menu, and just here, it actually shows us all the different uh, power optimizers that you can use in this system. It will always select the most common and the most cost effective to you. As you can see, the 350, which is superseded, and the 370, which is also superseded, which is why it's suggesting the P401. Okay. If I'm going to change because either my supplier hasn't got them or I've got in stock, say, the P404, click on P404, and you can see now that that's acceptable, one string of 12 P404 optimizers. Okay. So again, if I do a different panel, let's go for a sun power module. For those of you that know sun power, they actually have quite a high voltage. So what we're going to do is we're just going to type in a 400 uh, and let's go here for the max three 400. Again, we've got a 12. OK, maybe we'll change this to 14, for example. Up here, we then go recalculate. And then here you can see it's suggesting a five kilowatt inverter with the P405. If I select on the optimizers. Can I use a P401? No. Why not? Because it doesn't say you can. OK. There's a reason why it will say that you can't, and it's likely to do with either the current or the voltage. Sometimes it's down to the power, but generally speaking, it's either the current or the voltage. Okay, so it's a very, very short, very swift uh, way of showing uh, what, which, which optimizer and which inverter that you can use. I will cover this oversizing thing at a later date. Okay, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is just come back to um, let's just move it out of the way. Just press X. So then we come back to our project page. Now to do a residential system, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna come down here to the plus sign, move up here to residential and just click on residential. Now you can see that this format's slightly different. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna type in Mrs. Jones. I've done Mrs. Jones a few times. So I'm just gonna type in Mrs. Jones 55. And then on here, I'm just gonna type in the postcode this time. So SN3 or BL. 
Now you can see that then takes us directly to that postcode location. Uh, and we've got our red pointer on the actual property itself. Now say for example, we're gonna model this property just here. What I simply do is move my mouse over to the red, uh, the red dot. I hold down with my left button and I simply drag him over to the property itself, okay? If I was doing this one, same thing, just drag it over to the property. On the bottom right-hand corner, I've got plus and minus. So this is for zooming out and for zooming in. So if you've typed in the property and you're not quite sure where it is, you can always zoom out and then simply drag it over to the property in question, zoom in, and now we can see the property. I would always recommend to zoom in as much as you can. So I think I'm, yep, I'm all the way in now as much as I can. So when I'm designing the system, I can see things a lot clearer once it's zoomed out. If I have it like this and then press create, it's gonna show me everything on the next page, which is within inside this box. So always kind of zoom in so you actually can see where the property is. Other than dragging the, the red pointer as well, we can simply double click and it then takes us to that property as well. So I'm just gonna zoom in and that's that. So as I've mentioned about this box, if you were gonna design this building and this building, just ensure that this building is within inside this here. You may not find this on residential, it's more for commercial, but just make sure that it's inside this box because once we press create, that's what we're going forwards with. So if I am gonna drill this building, I'm simply just drag my pointer over, it's inside as well, okay? On the left-hand side, we've got the information. So the name that we called it, Mrs. Jones, is now given us the address on there as well. And it's also given the street. So if we wanna change this just here, can then put this to the back and it says 19. And if we know it's obviously 18, we can type in 18 and that's that there. We've got the city of Swindon, the postcode that we typed in, and then we've got the, the UK where it is. There's some other information in here as well, but we will be going through this at a later date. But essentially to start a project, you just need to type in the name, type in the postcode and find the property that you're gonna be modeling, okay? Once we're happy with that, we then simply go to create. Now, once we've pressed create, it's then going to be stored. And every uh, addition or every amendment that we make will always be stored going forwards. Okay. On the left hand side, we've actually got our workflow. So, as we can see, we were just on project info. And now, once we've pressed create, we're down at site modeling. So, again, on this one here to actually play with the property and design it, I'm just going to simply zoom in by clicking those plus buttons, zoom in and just make sure it's there nice and easy in front of me. If you have a mouse with a wheel, then you can, you'll find that if you scroll the wheel in, you'll actually zoom in, scroll the wheel out, you'll zoom out as well. So on this project just here, I can see that I've got my roof space, but the photograph that's actually been taken has come from a satellite. So we can see that the outside of the wall we can see here, but we can't see the outside of the wall here. So we just need to use a little bit of common sense here just to say that this photograph hasn't been taken perfectly above the actual uh, building itself, okay? Um, so that's that. I will come back to the questions in a second. I can see there's a couple of questions in there. <coughs> so down here on the bottom left-hand corner, we've got uh, a couple of toolbars. So I'm on the hand at the moment, which is for panning, so I can move this around my screen, okay? Just above here as well, I've got a spinner. So I can actually spin this around as we can see the property. I've got the zoom in and zoom out as I've already shown. And then just here, if I get lost, I can just press reset view and it comes back to where we started in the first place. So I'm just gonna zoom in. I'm just gonna move the hand so it's in the middle of my screen, zoom out slightly so I can get the whole building in there. And then up here, we've then also got our toolbar as well. Now the toolbar from left to right, we've got select. So you'll find uh, select in, in a few later stages. And this one here is a fountain pen, and this is the draw. So this is what we're gonna do. So we select the draw feature, and then we move our mouse over, and you can see now it's changed from an, an arrow to a plus. So I wanna put the solar panels on this side of the roof. So what I'm gonna do is actually draw the whole roof itself. So what I do is I simply move my mouse to the corner of the building, and I click once with my left mouse button. Now my finger has appeared. As I move my mouse across, we now have a line and we can come to the next corner, click again, move down. And right here, I'm gonna go on this corner just here. Now my eyes 
are actually looking at this bit just here. Once I get into position, my eyes are looking there. The reason why is clearly there's a right angle. If I don't look and I click there instead, I now don't have a right angle. I'm sure this building has been built to right angles. So once I'm in position, I then click again, again, move my mouse, come to the corner, and I can see I've got a right angle, which has now appeared in this bottom corner, okay? If I move my mouse slightly further down, when it comes to the per perfect area, perfect stage, you can see it presents itself with another right angle and a dotted line to join the dots together. So I click once again with my left mouse and I click up there. Once I get into the area, my mouse turns into a finger, press once again, and I've joined all of those dots together. Now there's a nice easy to check. I've got 801, 801, 7.6, 7.6. If I've made an issue where I've done something like this, I'll 775, 760, 802, 801, there's a problem. Okay, so I'm just going to press back. And the reason there is because I didn't have a right angle. Now, when we draw the ridge, we simply come up to the drawer again. And when we move our mouse down this line, we are, we're, we're, uh, we're given a, a white dot. As I come down, you'll see that the white dot suddenly changes into a turquoise dot, okay? That means I'm in the middle. So that means I'm at four meters right there. Click once, move across, and again, the turquoise dot is then appeared, and I can see that I've got a perfect 7.6, 7.6, 7.6, 401, 401, 401, 401. So I'm perfect and I've drawn a square in the middle. However, the Google Earth image is looking like the ridge is up here. so. I would make an assumption here that the ridge is actually in the middle of the building, and this has only come a uh, discrepancy from the Google Earth image. Top right hand corner, I then have the ability to go to 3D. So once I've drawn everything on the roof in 2D, I then come up here to 3D. Click on 3D, and now I can see my building. If I now move my mouse, I'm on select once again. If I move my mouse to the ridge, the ridge goes blue. I hold down my left button and I move my mouse forwards. And as I move my mouse forwards, it raises that ridge up. And as you can see, I've now just built my building. Really nice and simple, okay? Now the angle of the roof as well. So what we can do is press select. When you click on the roof, it shows you the angle. If I want to change this angle because I know it's 20 degrees, type in 20, press enter, it drops down to 20 degrees. Now, because this is perfectly in the middle, both sides are equal, in theory, we should have 20 degrees this side and 20 degrees this side, as you can show. And it shows you the angle that it's actually facing off the south as well. Okay, so let's move this back up. Let's say it's a 35 degree pitch, press enter, and it comes up and we've now got our design just like that. Okay, great. So I'm really happy with that, that's good. Now, the next stage, is over here on the left hand side we're going to come down to the pv module placement so we've done our site modeling the project info was the first stage of choosing the property now we now go to the pv module placement so click on pv module placement and here is our roof and then to start the panels we just have to choose the roof that we're going to put the panels on so we click on this roof here and it comes in directly into this roof up here in the top right corner, we've now got the ability to add PV modules. So I click on add PV modules, and we can see that it's actually suggesting the previous panel that we were using in our design, which was the SunPower panel. If I click on there, I've got the different ones that I've uh, recently done um, some, uh, some designs with. So we've got the SunPower module, we've got the LG, the Trina, the Longi, the Solar Edge. If, for example, we're using a, a JA Solar, just type in type of JA, JA Solar then appears, and then from this, we can come on here, and again, we've got every panel that JA have ever made. So let's say, for example, using a 360 watt panel, type in 360, actually, that's not a good example, 340, and we can see here that the 340 watt modules from JA, there's actually quite a few of them. So again, just be sure that you get the right one that you're using. So this one here is 72, so I would assume that's a 72 cell. It's a jam, so it's a, a, a mono panel. This one here is a JAM 60D10, um, and I think this one here is the most common one, the S10 one. So we can click on the S10, and then here we then have the opportunity for a uh, sorry, poly, uh, so a blue looking module or a black looking module. Come onto that, 
we're going to go for black, scroll down slightly, and now the racking. So flush mounted is in roof and it's on roof. It's flush to the roof. So this is the same thing that would always appear. The reason why it selected this one straight away is because in the 3D, we picked the ridge up. And if you remember, we selected it as 35 degrees. So this has already presented itself. A tilted is when you're doing a ground array or if you're doing a carport or if you're doing a flat roof section. And then dual tilt is obviously a flat roof where you're going east, west, east, west. So we're going with flush mounted. And then just here, we've got the opportunity of portrait and landscape. OK, so I'm going to select portrait and then I'm just going to have my row spacing of two centimeters. <coughs> to me, uh, two centimeters in there. And that's just for my mid clamp. And then press the arrow to get rid of it. And now my mouse is the solar panels. So to hold down my left button, keep holding and just move my mouse and you'll see that a blue square then appears. And then we have one panel, we have two and the further along we go, it then builds the panels onto the roof. When I get to a stage where I can't fit the panels on the roof, once I release my button, you can actually see that it won't allow those panels to go on the roof. So just here, when I select on the panels, I can then actually move the whole panels around to where I want them to go, just there. If I imagine that I don't actually want this panel and this panel, I can click on the arrow here and just drag that across. Like I said, the whole way through, I'm just using my left, left mouse button, okay? If I don't want this one panel, if I press, uh, if I just click on the panels and press delete, it deletes all of them, okay? Up here, I've got undo. So how can I get rid of this one panel? Click on it, select all of them, click on it again, and then press delete. Same over here as well. If I want this one, click on that one, press delete. If I've ever made a mistake, I can just press undo and it comes back. Or if I didn't make the mistake, I can press redo and it takes it off. Never come up here and press back. Okay, when you're in the designer, this is your undo and redo. Okay, so I'm just going to undo that and there we've got our panels. So as I come back to my entire site, I've now designed my house in 3D, and there we've got our roof as it is and how it appears. I can see down here I've got 12 modules in total, and I've got the kilowatt peak of four kilowatts and the an annual estimation of 4.24 kilowatts. Uh, sorry, 4.24 kilowatt hours, megawatt hours. Sorry. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. That's all good. Um, what else did I want to show you? If I wanted to come on to uh, the other side, say, for example, this is an east-west system, just press reset, comes back. And then again, just move my mouse over the top, click on this roof, it takes me into this roof. And then from this, click Add PV Panels. It's already selected the one that we've already used, which is the JA340. Uh, and then simply, same again, drag over the top. Okay. If I wanted to go in landscape, really simple. Add PV modules, and then just scroll down a little bit. Just here, we've got landscape. Click on landscape, and then from this, drag the panels over the top. Okay, nice and simple like that. Great. If I wanted to do a mixture of landscape and portrait, if I select the panels and then come here and then change them to portrait, you'll see that now it's actually four columns and four rows. So it doesn't really fit in that well. So what you can do with this is actually just move the panels down, move them down and move up. OK, and then from this, if I wanted to put landscape in, I'm already in portrait and the program knows that I'm in portrait. So what you'd have to do, let's say, for example, I'm just going to bring those down, move those up, extend that along, extend that along like that. And then let's say I want to put some landscape down the bottom. I simply click add PV panels change to landscape, press the arrow, and then I draw my landscape panels in there as well. Okay, so you could do a mix and match, you can do it how you want to do it, but that's how you're doing it. When you select the panels, that's when you'll change it. If nothing's selected, you simply click add PV panels and you can put those on there as well. Okay, just gonna delete those, click on that, press delete, come back to entire site in the bottom, top right hand corner. And again, we're back to where we are before, okay. I'm just going to go through some questions. <coughs> uh, 
Will we cover designing a ground frame system at any point? Yes, yes we will, Nick. Uh, we'll be doing that in the next session, actually, uh, next week on Friday. Um, was the battery training recorded this morning? Yes, it was. Um, I can send that out to you if you if you want that, Vaughan. Um, what if you don't know how large the array could be? Um, I don't really understand the question. Um, are you talking about what the DNO can be or, or what the, the, the panel size can be or, or the, the area size? Uh, does it automatically build the property at single story? Okay, good question. So I'm just going to come back. So when we do the uh, site modeling back in 2D, that's the outline of it. Once I come to 3D, what you'll find is this here at standard, the bottom section is at three meters. So when I click on this line, you can see it's at three meters. Okay. If I wanted to raise this up to say five meters, I can either uh, type in here five meters and the whole thing comes up like that. It's just to undo. Or what I can do is raise this up to five meters. Now, what you're seeing here is I'm just raising one side because I've only actually got one side, um, one side selected. So I'm just going to undo and go back to where we were before. So modeling 3D. So to raise the whole building up, what you can do is come on to select, click on the line and double click on the line. And then it selects all of the blue lines. Now we can raise this up and the whole building comes up. Okay. Or once this is selected, just up here, double click, type in five, press enter. And now we've got this at the five meter range. Okay. So this distance here, this is the edge here, just on the eaves, that's the actual distance. But as standard, it's, it's set at three meters. Okay, um, so that's that's that. I'll just come back to the next question. <coughs> How do you know if you're choosing the right PV module? Um, so check on the data sheet. So once we come onto the actual panels, so just here, come back, click on the panel. Once we've got the panels, just here it says view module specifications. So we can click on that and it gives us the information here. So the VOC, the ISC, the length, the width, uh, and the depth. You can then just mirror that with the actual uh, data sheet that you've got of that panel. Okay. Obviously the code gives it away as well. So 60 S10 340. Okay. So that's, that's that one. Um, let's see if landscape would have a higher output. Oh, yep. Great idea, Tony, about having a landscape with a higher output. Um, I'll show that in a second. So a certain amount of space you have to leave around the edge of the roof. Good question. I'll come back to that in a second. Could you please also send me the battery training? Yep, please include me a copy of the battery. <laughs> uh, did you save the first basic project? No, I didn't save it. Um, I just I just did that as an example and then just press delete. Um, can you show the delete panel section again? Yeah. So once we've got the panel selected, if I press delete, you can see here with the white dots around the outside, they're all selected. If I press delete, it gets rid of all of them. Just undo. If I want to get rid of just this one panel, click on it, select all of them, click again, press delete. Okay. Again, this one, click on here, press it again, press delete. Okay. Hopefully that's that. Um, okay. So just to come back to the, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the distance around the side. So it is a good question. I'm just going to press delete and get rid of all of our panels. And just here we can see this is our building around the outside. Once I click on the roof, I come into the roof and I'm um, I'm demonstrated with here. We've got the blue line around the outside. When I move my mouse onto the blue line, let's get away from that thing there. It then turns into a finger. If I hold down my left button, I can drag this down and I can actually see that I've got a guideline here of now 40 centimeters. Same thing over here as well. Same thing on the bottom. And you can basically bring guidelines in from the outside of the actual roof. If we were doing a semi-detached house, for example, you wanted to know where the middle point was, come back to the site modeling, go to 2D, 7.6 meters. So we're then talking about 3.8 meters to the middle. Come back to the PV modules. There's my blue line, hold down, come all the way across to the middle. So 3.8, is that what I said 3.8? That's 7.6, yeah, well 7.6. Now I know that that's in the middle of the building, okay? You can have as many of these guidelines as you want. Makes no difference. You can put them all over, do wherever you want to do. They're just guidelines. When I come to the PV modules, when I add the PV modules, the modules will go over the guidelines. 
okay? But they won't go where there's no roof. So if, for example, let's just clean this up a little bit. If, for example, you wanted to have your guidelines like this and you wanted to put your panels in the middle, then you simply click in your corner section and then just drag those over the top. So you can see if you're trying to keep to a, a certain guideline on this side, you're now falling without that. Let's see, you can move in there. Now you're over both the sides of the guidelines, but they're guidelines, they're there for you to, to guide the array. Okay, I'm just gonna put these back in as we had them before. Okay, and before anyone asks about chimneys and things like that, yes, they're all good. Okay, so once we've done our, our, our panels, we're good with our panels, we're happy with where they are. We've got 12 panels, we've got a four kilowatt system. I then come down to the electrical design. So I click on the electrical and you can see straight away we're in single phase because we're doing a residential system. And it's suggesting to us that to use a 3.68 inverter and the P401 power optimizer. If I wanted to change the inverter, so say for example, I, I have the ability to actually have a four kilowatt inverter. I've requested this from the DNO. They've said you can have a four kilowatt inverter. I can simply click on here, press delete, and then type in 4,000. And you can see there it is. No, it's not. Oh, brilliant. Type it in 4,000 H. H, there it is just there, the 4,000 H. Okay, and now it's suggesting over here, I've now got my four kilowatt inverter, which has been displayed. Okay, something I noticed on there straight away, so I'm just gonna change this back to a 3680. So here, this is actually showing what this inverter actually can do as well. So we have the EV charging inverter, <coughs> excuse me, which is our, um, our EV charging inverter inbuilt as one. Um, so you can see that this is one that we have supported there with a 3.68 range. Um, this one can also be a DC coupled system as well. So it's a battery and we can also see there that it's single phase as well. Okay, so don't, don't think that this is just the EV charging one. It's just showing that there's an option out there for this particular model that this one can also be an EV charging inverter if you choose that one. Okay, so we go on the 3.68 and then here again, like I showed before, which optimizers can I use with this? And unfortunately, I don't have a mouse, so I can't actually show you, but as you scroll down, it will show you each of the optimizers that you can actually see within there as well. Okay, so we're gonna go with the P401, 3.68. We then simply click generate. Once we click generate, here, my mouse now, as you can see, has actually got a little squiggle on it, and this is the string. So to do the stringing, we simply hold down on the first one, and we have one. So we have one power optimizer, two, and as I move along, we can see that we're actually building up. Now, red is bad, obviously red is bad, but why is red bad? We don't have enough optimizers in this circuit. Once we then get to enough optimizers, it suddenly goes green, we're good to go. Okay, that doesn't mean that you need to stop. You can carry on and carry on. And from this, we can now see we've got all 12 panels, all 12 optimizers, all in the same circuit. If you're doing a larger array where you've got 16, 18, 20 panels, something like that, what you can do is carry on and carry on. If you then get to the stage where it goes red, you've got too many in that string. So this is a really nice indication to show you how many panels you can actually get in that string. And indeed, you can string this as you want. If you want to come down and come up like a snake all the way across, you can do that. Or if you wanted to start over this side, come along, come back, it's down to you. Okay, so that's that's all good. Once we've then got the, the string, there's our inverter, and we can see over here, we've got 110% oversizing. So um, that's, that's, that's adequate, we're, we're good to go. Um, and from this, we've got our inverter here and our panels there. The next stage, we've then got the financials, but I'm not gonna do that today, because that it's, it's a bit, bit more of an explanation. And I then simply come down to my summary and report page. Now our summary and report page, so we've got our logo here on the right hand side. So we can change this, you can put your own logo in there if you'd like to do that. Okay, so that's just there, just by simply uh, by delete the logo or put your logo in there. We've got the name that we called it orig originally, which is Mrs. Jones 55. We've got the address in there, we've got today's date. Now, as I scroll down slightly on here, we've got an image of our property. So I've got the, the ability now to go to grid view where it goes all gray, all black, or satellite view where I can now see the property that I've got. I can edit the image, zoom in, spin it around, and make it look how I want it to appear on my report page that I sent to the client. Got a couple of other images there. 
and this is just a single out spec, so I personally wouldn't do that. I just press the arrow, and then from that, those images then go around. But again, with these ones here, you can spin them around, maybe from a bird's eye view, maybe from the back of the house, wherever you want to do it. Okay. And then here, the overview. So we've got 12 uh, solar panels. We've got uh, the one inverter. We've got 12 power optimizers. And then as we come down, we've got the simulation results, which is saying 4.08 kilowatts installed, <coughs> 3.68 inverter, and uh, the 4.2 megawatt hours of generation. And then just under one ton of CO2 is going to be saved that year. As I scroll down, we've then got the, um, the, the generation throughout the whole year. And as I move above, we can actually see what the estimated generation is going to be per month. OK, that's all good. Scroll down a little bit further. We've then got our PV modules, so the 12 JAs. And we've got our bill of materials with our 3.68 and our P401 optimizers. Okay. System loss diagram, so lots of other images. So we can see there's no shading on this site because there's no shading actually um, um, being portrayed on here. And one of the reasons why there's no shading on here as well is because we haven't actually drawn any shading into this site. Just move down. So there's no shading on this whatsoever. You can see there's no trees. We haven't drawn any trees. We haven't drawn any other buildings, anything like that. If there was a tree or if there was another building, you have to draw that to actually show what the shading losses are going to be. Okay. There's lots more that I can do with this summary page, but as this is only the basic, I'm just going to just leave it just there um, and just show you that's how you can do it. Now to print this out or to save this as the, uh, to the customer, save it as a PDF or print it onto a piece of paper. Top right hand corner, we've got an icon of a printer. So we simply click on the printer, opens up a new window, and then here we can save it as a PDF, or we can say uh, print it on our, our printer itself. Okay. My printer's not actually connected. Oh no, boom print. Wonderful. Just looking for my printer. I haven't got printers plugged in. Okay, there's a good time to go over the questions. Is there a certain amount of space you have to leave around the edge of the roof? Um, <coughs> yes. Um, in reality, it comes down to your personal, <coughs> excuse me. In reality, it comes down to your personal preference and your installation team and what they need to do, um, the amount of space that you leave. But I believe on uh, residential, it has to be at least 300 mil, so 30 centimeters. Uh, on commercial, um, under permitted development, it's one meter. You're saying stretch training. Yep. Uh, please include me a copy of the pattern. Everyone loves it. Did you save the first page? Oh, I've done that one as well. Okay. Um, okay. And then as I come down, um, how are you getting the rod of the lines? I don't know what you mean by that, the rod of the lines. Uh, will, you get, will you get a copy of this webinar? Yes, you will be sent a copy of this webinar on Monday. Um, how do you add in the three words? The three words. I don't know what you mean by that. Generated output based on actual ge um, geographic positioning. Yes, yes, yes. So the generation output is actually based on the geographic location. It's based on the um, uh, on the angle of the roof as well, and obviously the way that the roof is facing <coughs> as well. So that's that's what the generation is actually shown for. Um, the image of Google Apps is terrible. Okay, great one. Clive, you've got a question here. I was trying to follow this via my house, but the image on Google Maps is terrible. Can you import a photo from a drone? Yes, you can. We are showing that next week. So yes, okay. So that's it, that's my project and that's it. Great, very, very straightforward, very easy and the different things on there as well, okay. Like I said, over the next three three weeks, four weeks, we're actually gonna be going over loads of different things in here as well, which, uh, which, which I'm not gonna show you today. So I'm gonna come back to my folder. In my top left hand corner, I click on my folder and then you'll be able to see that project that we've just designed just listed in there. Now I'm going to do a commercial. So I simply come down to plus, click on commercial. <coughs> commercial demo, basic level one. OK, again, type in my postcode. So I've got one here and 11 six Y H. Click on there takes me then to my commercial property. Now the commercial property that I wanted to design is actually down here. 
So this is the one I want to do. So I just drag my red pointer over to the property, just here, zoom in, and then we can actually see the building that we're designing just here. Okay, nice and happy. That's good. Um, nothing else I need to do over here. Press create. Same thing then happens, automatically comes down to site modeling. As I zoom in, now I'm gonna likely put solar on this roof. So I come up to draw and then I simply click on the corner. And then I always go for the longest roof first because then I know that my right angle is gonna be quite, quite good. I click on there like this, come onto that section there. I'm looking for the right angle. Don't go just here, make sure you get the right angle. Click once again, move up. Again, I've got the right angle and the right angle then positions itself as well. And that, join the two dots, 2419, 2419, 4571, 4571. And from this, click on draw again, move my mouse down the middle. Once it gets there, it pings into position. Got my blue turquoise dot, join the two together, and the finger, that's it, great. Okay, if I've made a mistake where I've actually not got the roof in, so I, it's uns unsure for me here, but if, if you've made a mistake, then what you can do is just click on select and then you can move the line out as far as you want. But just be sure that you actually still get those right angles. So say for example, this is where my building is. Now I've got 12.1 and 13.7. So the same thing would apply with my ridge. I just have to move this over and when it gets into the middle, it pings. So just oh, missed it. There, just pings into position. So we've got 12.9, 12.9. Okay, just going to undo that. And that's it. Again, with skylights and obstacles, <coughs> we'll be showing that next week. Okay, so that's it. I've drawn the outline of my building. I then come down to the PV modules. And then again, what side of the roof do I want to go? Click on the side of the roof. And now it's taking me to there. Now, rather than this actually taking me into the roof, because it's slightly larger, what I need to do is I want to align the modules on this arrow just here. So if I click onto that arrow, it then takes me into that particular roof. So same thing with the guidelines. So if we say a meter, move my mouse up, drag this down. My eyes are now looking up here, so I can see 0 0.95. Just get on there again. There it is, bring that down to Bring that down to one minute, well, that's close enough. Same thing, move over here, move my line in, there's one meter, same thing on here, drag this one up, one meter, same thing on here, drag this one over one meter. And we can see that I'm potentially not on the roof just here. So once again, up here, top right hand corner, we've got add PV modules. Click on add PV modules. And this time, say for example, we're gonna go for uh, a trina. So we click on the trina, and then here we're going to use the one that I've most recently used is a 390 vertex 0 0.08. So we can see this is at the top. Click on that one, blue or black, I'm going to go blue. And then we've got portrait or landscape. So once again, I'm going to go portrait. And then here, um, I'm going to go for the row spacing of two centimeters again. Now, if you've not noticed, it's actually suggesting tilted and 40 degrees, 43 degrees. The reason it's suggesting tilted is because I didn't do the 3D. So if I come back on the left hand side to site modeling, just here, when I now go to 3D, you can actually see we didn't put the pitch on it, so it's a flat roof. So because it's a flat roof, it automatically thinks that you're doing a ground array or a flat roof. Okay. So if I now click on that arrow, and then again, we're going to pick the ridge up, and let's say we've got a, a perfect 12 degree pitch on this roof. Now then come to the PV modules, add PV modules, same things all applied, the Trina, the 380, and now it's actually suggesting to go flush mounted instead. Okay, so just, just be wary of that. So here we've got the portrait, we've got our row spacing of two centimeters. And again, we can then just click in the corner, drag the panels over the top. And then from this, we can see that this one down here, you're not gonna get in on the guidelines. We're less than a meter away from the edge, but at the top we are. So I personally would actually just pick that up and then move that down into position. Okay, great, beautiful. If we wanna do any access routes and things like that, again, we're gonna be showing those in different sections, but essentially just as a nice example to actually show you how to put the panels on the roof. So here we've got 195 panels, we've got 76 kilowatts installed, and it's almost 70 megawatts of generation.
If I click on an entire site, let's say, for example, do we want to go on this roof as well? It is more northerly facing, but if the customer's got a big demand of power and we can fit the panels on the roof and structures and things like that, how much power are we actually going to get from this roof? Down here in the bottom left hand corner, we've got a radiance. If I click on a radiance, it shows the level of light that's actually going to hit that roof. And the brighter the color, let's click on these, the brighter the color, the more the generation. So we can see this side, we're actually going to get 87% this side is only 80 percent so this is the worst roof of the two but like i said if the customer wants to go on both sides of the roof they've got a big demand of energy 80 percent is still pretty good so what we're going to do is just go back put those panels back on come to entire site press a radiance to get rid of it and then this time click on this roof and again add pv panels it's going to click up here drag these over the top like so drag these down Got the same amount on this side as well and we can see on our counter 195 over here um, and we've got 76 uh, kilowatts on this side as well when i press entire site we've now designed our commercial building exactly as it needs to be i've got everything on there with a total of 390 uh, uh, modules 152 kilowatts installed and 134 megawatt hours of generation okay so very very similar to the residential just bigger then on the left hand side, we click on electrical design. And then over here, we can see we've got lots of inverters because we're actually on single phase. So just be sure to come over to three phase if it's three phase. And then just here, we can see that it's actually suggesting two 66 kilowatt inverters. So this is um, uh, one of our synergy inverters. So we've got two of those, quantity two and 266. It's also suggesting the P801 which is a power optimizer, which is used in our commercial uh, uh, inverters, or can be used in our commercial inverters, where we have one power optimizer for two panels. Okay, so we're plugging two panels together. And then from this, we then plug the, the remaining cables into the power optimizer. This is a saving for cost. Rather than actually having one power optimizer per panel, we've actually got one power optimizer per two. You can only use the dual optimizers, so the P801s or, or the greater uh, uh, optimizers, on a 16 kilowatt or larger inverter. So this is for three phase. Now, once I press generate, what I've now got again is my stringing tool. So I can start stringing along here and I can come along and I've got red. Same thing applies when I've got red, I haven't got enough power optimizers. As soon as I get to the right amount, it then allows me to then go green. And as I was saying before, if you do too many, it then goes red again. And we have this error that applies up here as well. Now, what we've also got is another feature. So just coming back to the 66, and on this feature here, to make this nice and quick and simple, we've also got auto stringing. When we click on auto stringing, it basically does all of the stringing for us. So we can see all the stringings now in there. I press generate. And as I zoom in, we can actually see that the stringing's all been done for us. It's been calculated. And here we've got a string here of 16 optimizers. The next one comes across to 16 and you can see all of those strings that are in there as well okay now this one over here is actually northerly facing compared to this one which was more southerly facing but not so much uh, southerly so over here we can actually see the percentage uh, of the the power the actual dc power so this one here if i click on this one we can see this is the the southerly facing and this one here then highlights the northerly facing so we can see that this one's slightly oversized not oversized but it's slightly more power is going to be produced from this one compared to this one just here okay so if i just come back to reset so there's our image and there's our strings and then we've got the two inverters on there as well then when i come down to my summary page once again same as we had before we've got our name on there we've got our address and today's date and over here we've then got the uh, the logo as before our image in here of our property so on this one perhaps we can actually show the client this is why i think you need to go on this side of the roof as well okay so we can move that so it looks nice scroll down slightly and then just here on this one we can actually go to satellite view a radiance and then from this we can actually show the client as a nice color form that this side's going to generate more power compared to this side and then perhaps on this one we can then zoom in spin this around as an aerial view like a bird would see it radiance grid view satellite image okay 
So you can play around with those. Once you've done each of them, just press done. That's it, you're finished. Scroll down again. And then here we've then got the generation over the whole year. Again, so this one's going to be 152 kilowatts installed. Maximum ever achieved is actually 131 kilowatts of AC power. Um, and this is because of the different angles of the roof. Annual generation of 134 megawatt hours and the CO2 savings of, of almost just over 30 tons of power. Same thing applies as we scroll down. We've got the powers, uh, the, the modules, 195 on the on the east and 195 on the west. Got our two 66 kilowatt inverters and the PA01s of 196 that we need in total. Okay, system loss diagram. Now another thing as well at the very top. So not only can we actually again save this as a PDF or print it off by clicking on the printer. Just up here we've got project layout. If I click on the project layout, I can then download as a PDF a stringing report. So now I've actually got a whole stringing report and over here on the right hand side we can see we've got a 66 kilowatt manager and we've got three strings on the first one and three strings on the second one. It's all nice and detailed on there. And as you come down again the same on the other side and then over here we've then got the whole string layout to show you where you start, where you're finishing and so you can provide this to your installers uh, so for the mapping of that. Okay again we can print this out piece of paper save it as a PDF, email it over, and then from this, you think of the string report as well. Okay, so time is now two o'clock. So um, pretty much shown you everything that I wanted to show you today uh, as the basic steps. Um, points to note, just to go over as in conclusion, um, is when you actually, where's my one, Mrs. Jones. <coughs> so the same thing as well with the electrical design. So you can come and amend any of these different things. So if I click on the inverter over here, just press delete, it's going to delete that inverter. When it presents, it's a single phase. So when it presents here, you can either manually string by coming over the top of your mouse or as well on the residential, you can click auto stringing. Same thing applies. Okay, and that's it, all good. I'm just going to come into the questions. Okay, fantastic, loads of questions. Uh, can you select EV charging model with no EV? and no batteries installed day one. Yes. Um, yes. So this, this particular site that we've got just here with the 3.68 inverter, this is no EV and this is no batteries. So this is just the 3.68 inverter. Um, the, the point that I was making before about the, the, the image of a car there is just showing that we have a 3.68 inverter that can do EV as well. So when you're coming to actually uh, purchase the product, um, it depends what you've sold to the customer, whether it's just a, uh, the inverter or the EV charging inverter, it just shows you the range. Um, so that's that. How do you add in the three words? It's come up again, I don't know what that means. Uh, that's that there. How would I know the pitch of the roof? Okay, so how would you know the pitch of the roof? You're, you're quite right. <coughs> You need to attend a site prior and determine this. Sorry, Richard, the whole process is new to me. No, that's fine, no problem. So how would you how would you uh, understand the, the pitch of the roof? So there's a couple of things you can do. Obviously, if you're going to the site and you've actually um, visited the site and you can actually understand what the angle of the roof is. Um, another thing you can do is perhaps go onto Google Earth and go onto Street View um, and actually see the pitch of the roof as well, just to give an indication before a site survey. Generally speaking, most residential houses are between 30 and 35 uh, degrees. Um, some are much higher at say 45, 40 degrees, and some are much lower at say 15, not, not necessarily 15, but between 20 and, and 30 degrees. So it, it would come down to the particular property itself. Um, so that's that. If I want to go back from electrical design to PV module placement and do an amendment, or do I have to start again? No, you can do that. You can, if you've, if you've made a, a problem here, so it's a good question actually. So say for example here, I'm in my electrical design, I've got 12 panels and say for example, I want to put 14 panels on there. Come back to the PV modules, click on the PV modules, just gonna move these over for a demonstration purpose. Bring those over like that. We've got the additional four to two panels on there. So now we're at 14. Because I've changed the modules, I have to change the electrical design. When I come onto electrical design, it's now showing those two panels aren't actually on there. So what I can do is I can just simply click on the, the inverter uh, and then I can click on the string and then I can just go like this, okay? And that's that there. So then I've just joined those two up together. 
Or if I didn't want to do this, I can then just click on the inverter, press delete on the inverter, and then from that carry on. Okay, so hopefully that, uh, that answers that question. Just undo that. Uh, undo that, put that back there. Um, okay, where's the compass pointing? Great question. Compass is pointing north all the time. Red at the top is north. So whenever you're doing anything, you're always um, working in that. If I spin this around, no, I can't do it there. I need to go to it. that one. So as I spin it around, you can see my compass on the right hand side here is changing as well. So the red is always uh, pointing towards the north. Okay. Um, do you have to keep signing up for every webinar in the series? Uh, you're, you're, you don't have to. Um, I would 100% advise you to. Um, you can either go to the website, as I showed at the very beginning, and click on each of those links and register. Um, or if you'd like me to send you an email where you can register for all, all the three coming up, um, then just let me know and I can do that. Um, then you can just one, 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 one thing. Um, what three four words is more accurate version of postcode location? Oh, got yeah. What three words? Yeah, gotcha. Don't know, Nick. I don't actually know about the three words. I don't think so. I know that you can use an air code um, uh, or, or coordinates as well. Um, and this is a global platform. So if you're doing an installation in Ireland, for example, they don't really have postcodes over there. They have air codes. So you can type that in. Um, or if you're doing an installation in the Bahamas or I say the Bahamas, what a lovely place to go. Um, so, yeah, but I don't know about what three words. Uh, as roof pitch seems important to assessing the power created, do you find the actual pitch? Same same question as before. Um, you'd either have to go to the site and actually find out or use Google Earth to actually get an understanding of that. Um, yes, it is impressive. Thanks very much, Steve. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the kind words. Um, doing commercial with free roofs, copy and paste for the other two. Yes. Yes, Tony. Um, very, very similar. I'll show you that. And I don't want to give too much away for the next sessions. Radiance data. Yes, uh, Radiance is available in the designer for the residential as well, in all of them. Um, if you can only get two phases from the DNO, would you treat them as separate systems under G98 or G99? Only get two phases from the DNO. Hmm. I don't know what you mean by that question, but essentially uh, residential properties have single phase and commercial properties have three phase. There are some anom anomalies in there as well, where some properties have three phase. Um, if you have a bi-phase or a split phase, uh, you can't use a three phase inverter. It would have to be two single phase inverters. Um, in that case, you can go for a 3.68 under G98 on one phase and a 3.68 under G98 on the other phase as well. So that's that. Um, lots of comments about three words. Um, you take a pitch value uh, from going into the loft Yes, and take exactly. Yeah, you can take the pitch uh, reading from the loft and actually doing the internal rafters. Um, and will you get recording? Yes, that's it. So happy days. Just show you very briefly as a, a bit of a teaser um, for the, the copy and paste. There's lots of things you can do. So if I'm drawing this building here, so I'm still in 2D, what I can do is just draw a big square around the outside. It highlights all of my lines in blue. I can press Control C click on this section, press control V, and then I can actually draw this roof into position as well. Okay. If I then go to 3D, I've copied exactly the same buildings together. Okay. We can see there's a chimney on this roof as well. Uh, if I just spin onto here, make this in line, and then just up here, just gonna zoom in, make sure that's in line where it needs to be, oh, just like that. Move that into position. And then here I've got obstacles. So right here, I can actually draw my chimney over the top. And let's say, for example, I've got a skylight as well. Just gonna put my skylight there. The further you zoom in, it will give you the, the dimensions of the chimney. Once you click on the chimney, you can make this smaller, wider, you can spin it around, you can do what you want with it. If I then go to 3D, zoom in, once I spin around, you can see there's my chimney and there's my, uh, my, my skylight, okay? Click on select, click on the skylight, just press flush, so it's into the roof. There's my chimney, raise my chimney up. And again, just clicking and holding down my left button. And now from this, I can actually see my very high chimney and my skylight in the roof. Now, what's quite interesting about this one as well is if I now click on a radiance, just move this into position, 
So we can see because we've got quite a steep pitch on this roof, this is very bright, okay? And this is obviously very dark, but you can just work out that there's a, a difference in, in shading patterns, which are actually coming from this chimney. So if I spin this around like so, you can actually see this is a nice purple and down here we're producing 50, 57, 58%. The further closer I get to this, uh, this chimney, our irradiance is then actually dropping, okay? So we can actually see what's happening here with, you know, to stay away from this kind of area, if, if it were in a, um, a, a southerly aspect roof. If we did put modules on this roof, so I'm just gonna do that now as well. When I then put the modules on the roof, as I drag and hold into position, the panels won't go where there's an obstacle. They won't go where there's no roof and they won't go where there's an obstacle, okay? So if I move those in position now, I'm just gonna get rid of these panels, just so you can see that I've got just these panels here, okay? Very, very bad, I'd never install anything like this. But if I then come to electrical design, just remove that inverter that we had before, suggest a new inverter, auto string, generate. And the reason I'm showing you this now is because if I now come to the summary page, so there's our panels. Fantastic. Just spin that around so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So we're going to have some shading impact from this chimney. As I scroll down in our thing at the bottom here, we've now got the shading irradiance loss of 3%. So it does take into effect the shading. Now, obviously to you and to me, that seems very low of 3%, but don't, don't forget this is on a northerly facing roof. So the, the shade actually that's going to appear is only going to appear on these in the, in the late afternoon over a whole year. Okay, so it does take the shading into consideration. Cool. Um, I'm just going to finish. I can't really finish on a bad page like that. So I'm just going to finish like that. Okay, I've got a couple more questions. If anyone's got any more questions, then please chat away now. Um, we're going to see the recording later. Uh, sorry, can you show how you put the skylight in again? Yes. Tony, were you on the phone? So the, the skylight, so we're on 2D. Okay, and we will be showing this next week as well anyway. So when we're on uh, 3D, top right hand corner, we're in 2D. By the way, if you make any mistake in 3D, what you'll find is sometimes you'll pick the roof up and it will just all fall through the floor or it comes up different or odd. You've made a mistake in 2D. 3D is never wrong. 2D is the only thing that you've made wrong. And we'll, we'll have some examples next week of what you can do wrong. Just gonna press this. So to draw an obstacle, we're in 2D. What I always do is I straighten up the actual uh, design. I move the design to the top so then I can gauge my line on this black line at the top. Just straighten that up. You can zoom in, move up to the top like so. So you can see that I'm in line now. Then here I've got obstacles. <coughs> Click on the obstacle and then I simply draw in my chimney or draw in my skylight as so. Then I go to 3D. And as I spin around over the top, there's my here my, my dormer and my sorry my uh, my my skylight. Click on that there. Press flush. There's my chimney. Hold down. Move my chimney up. Okay, all good. Uh, will you cover complex roof show? <laughs> yes, yes we will. Yes, roof with valleys, dormers, chimneys, absolutely everything. It's it's the the way that we've structured this is for you just to get the basics on how to use from this session today. Drawing the angles, sorry, drawing the lines, drawing the roofs. Get used to the program, and hopefully you'll be able to use it over the coming days. Um, and then from this next week, we then go into lots of different roofs. Um, so some really really nice uh, examples that we're going to be showing exactly how to do it. Um, what the options are in the IE obstructions. Okay, sure. So up here, um, so for the, the rewatch the session, so um, so for this session that you're on now, you'll be sent a recording of this session on Monday, um, so you can catch that up. Uh, one other thing to note as well, and I haven't yet, down here in the bottom right-hand corner, we've also got this question mark. If you click on the question mark, now we know how installers love to, let's just move this out of the way, we know how installers love to read manuals. So what we've done is we've created some videos. So when you click on videos, here we've got creating a residential project, creating a commercial project, 
calculating tree shading, which I've not even shown you today. Uh, how to upload a custom image. There's lots of different videos in there. And then how to draw roofs. How to draw a hip and roof, a hip and valley roof, a hip roof, a jerkin head roof, an M shaped roof, all of these different roofs that are available. So we can click on this one just here. It then takes us into YouTube and it just simply then shows you exactly how to draw an M shaped roof. Okay. That's not the right one, but there we are. So that's that's down there. Just to point that out once more, bottom right hand corner, we've got the question mark. Click on the question mark, and then here we've got videos. Click on videos, and then it shows you all of those different videos that you can watch for that as well. So that's that. Um, uh, do we offer a service of doing designs? Yes, but no, yes. The designer program is uh, is there for you as installers, uh, installers to use. OK, so the, the more that you get used to it, honestly, the, the quicker, the better. Everything about it is just brilliant. It really, really is. Um, we do offer a service of doing designs if they're commercial designs. <coughs> Certainly not for residential, where you can say, oh, can you design this one for me? However, that's not a no. Um, the, the best way of doing this, if you ever send me an email and say, can you design me a, a project? Of course I will, no problem. Um, what I'm going to say very, very briefly about this, and, and for all of you, if you ever have any issues with anything, and you've got a problem, a, a difficult roof, anything like that, you have to create the project first. Okay. So if you're going to create a project, let's just say we're down here. We're going to type in a postcode. So let's go SN4, type in the project, and you want me to design this building, okay? Or this one just here, okay? What I'm going to ask you to do is create the project first. So give it a name, okay? Press create, and now it's stored under your account. If I design it, it's under my account, and you'll never be able to see it. So the best thing to do is for you to create the account, put that red dot on the building so that I know exactly which building it is. Then Scroll down here on the left-hand side once you're in the project. And just here, we've got these three buttons that say share. If you click on share, and then just here, it says share with users. Click on that. You can type in my email address. So that's richard.fuel at solar, oh, solaredge.com. And then here, change this to can edit. Press plus. Now my name now appears in your project. So I can now see your project, and now I can work on your project. If you say to me, I've just shared a project with you, I've got no idea what it's called, where it is, because there's hundreds and hundreds of designs. So just here to make it easy, you can press copy project link. And now send me an email. Dear Richard, please, can you look at this project? Paste. And then from that, this link will then appear. And this link here is exactly the same as link, this link up here. So if you don't copy it, just up here, press control copy. And now then send me an email. OK, and then I can do the 2D, the 3D, any problems that you've got, anything like that. Please don't don't hesitate to get in touch. OK, um, but yeah, but general as in a design service. Can you do me a residential design? Can you do this? Can you do that? You'll get used to it. Don't worry about it, Tony. You, you will get used to it. Cool. Uh, what about new build? That's next. Uh, someone's asking if you can use what three? Yes, three words. Everyone said about three words. Um, I'm going to find out about the three words anyway. So. Anyway, thanks very much, everyone, for attending. Um, it's quarter past two. I've got another meeting starting one minute ago. So uh, thank you very much. See you next week, hopefully, and good luck with the designer. If you've got any problems, any issues, then please do let me know. Um, and that's, that's that, okay? There's a little report that's coming after, a little survey that happens after this. Please put your notes in there. Please, I don't really care about the numbers. It's more about the case of what you want to see. If there's certain things that you want to see from us, certain training, certain things within designer, um, how to do obstacles, how to do curved roofs, anything like that, please really, really do value because I, I read these and I actually want to see um, what, what you'd like us to do. Okay, so thanks very much, everyone, and see you next week. Cheers. Have a good weekend.